I could clickbait you with this changes everything, except it doesn't. It changes one thing, so let's talk about that. Hey guys, this teal color on the Sonoff means that this Sonoff Mini R4M is matter enabled and it got released today. And I've been playing with one for the last couple of weeks. So here we are talking about Sonoff and first matter device from ITED. How much of a change that's going to make to your home automation ecosystems, well, that's down to you. But I'm going to tell you all the advantages of this device having matter and disadvantages as well, because there are a couple. It's actually not my first matter device, but it's the first matter device that I've used because up until now I had no matter hub. Now I got myself Alexa um, hub, which comes with matter support, and that was something that I've used in my experiments with Son of Mini R4. Um, but before you need to get any further, let's answer the question why it doesn't change everything. It changes one thing. How are you going to interact or pair your sum of device with ecosystems that mostly depend on the cloud? Right now, the matter support is going to be between Apple, Alexa and Google Home. And some of you might actually have a matter compatible dongle from uh, Home Assistant. I haven't seen anything compatible with Node-RED, but I'm sure soon enough I'm going to see plenty of options to use that with Node-RED too. But that's in the future. Right now, device like this, Matter-enabled Sonoff, can be added to either Alexa ecosystem or Google Home ecosystem without flashing a custom firmware. And it's less of a bigger deal than you think, especially when you consider that Zigbee devices already exist and we could do that for quite some time. So no, it doesn't change everything. It changes how you pair your device and how you share it between different ecosystems. Do you remember this? This is another Sonoff Mini R4 Extreme, which I reviewed in this video, and it uses Wi-Fi instead. There is also exactly same form factor for Zigbee, if that's what you're into. So on the surface, not much has changed other than the nice color of the terminals, which coincidentally matches my bicycle. That means I'm going to like it a little bit more. But on the surface, it's still the same form factor, which should fit behind a wall switch like this, providing that you have a life and no troll, because that's what's required to use Sonoff Mini R4. M. Now, if you don't have a neutral line in there, then you can still use it in a ceiling rows because that's where you're going to need to find your life and neutral in that configuration. This is a single channel relay rated for 10 amps for resistive load. So remember that it's plenty for handling your lights regardless of what you've got. Unless you're trying for some reason to operate the lights at a football stadium or something similar, then you probably need something beefy. But for the home scenario, it's perfect. It is 33 by 40 by 17 millimeters in size, so you should be able to fit it in most of the uh, electrical enclosures behind your switch. So that shouldn't give you any problems, especially that it has enough terminals to get it connected, unlike some of the Shelly devices that I've dealt in the past. But if you're unlucky enough to have one of those shallows electrical boxes behind your switch, then check out this video about the Ever switch, which is a tiny little bit smaller than this, so that might help you out. Lastly, it is a matter device and it uses Wi-Fi, 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi, and it has a support for Bluetooth 5.0. So, without further ado, we probably should start with, well, opening it up and seeing what's inside, because we all want to know, right? Getting inside the shell is quite easy, it's kind of just a couple of tabs that you can pry open and see what's inside, and majority of the device is going to just be a relay and a power delivery. To, to handle everything else. But the control board and the relays are on separate daughter boards, something that we've seen already on the previous iterations of Extreme Series. And while I can't verify the markings on the relay itself, what I can do is take a closer look at the microcontroller controlling this device. This time around we have ESP32, no surprise there, C 
3. This particular chip is quite interesting because it uses a RISC-V, so it's an open source architecture, and there is a plenty of interesting development going that direction, so should you want to try and flash it with a custom firmware, there might be some interesting options in the future. But for now, let's take a look at the PCB itself, and you can see that development paths are exposed. They're tiny, but you can still kind of solder and latch to all of them, and you have RX, TX, ground, power delivery, and GPIO00 hidden under the button. That's the only physical button that you can use to interact with device. So flashing in theory is going to be possible, but it has a matte support, so would you even care at this point? As there is no much else inside, let's put it back together and get in with wiring. Wiring is relatively simple as all the terminals are clearly labeled for you and the user manual will show you different ways you can actually install your device, including two-way support for switches. The power in goes to the live in and neutral, the connector to your bulb goes with a, a live out and neutral, and then you have a couple of different configurations for your wall switch. In my test, I'm just using a single toggle switch, so I'm going to use S2 and S1 bridge together for that. That should be plenty for the demonstration. And here is the interesting thing. As soon as I plugged that in, it went into pairing mode and I got a notification on my Android phone prompting me that there is a new matter supported device in my network and I could add it to Google Home. And this is the convenience I'm talking about. There is no more extra steps. Adding matter devices is super simple. I'm going to ignore Google Home for now because I've got different plans for the beginning of this video, especially that I've got this. Since we know where this is going and my Alexa speaker didn't ask for it, let's actually open Alexa since I got the hub itself and try to add it in there. Now, I did have to go through a couple of steps of going to the devices, adding any devices, and then I would see the device already listed, they're waiting to be added, so that was simple. Then once I scan the code at the back of the device uh, and enter my Wi-Fi credentials, I was ready to go. The entire process must have taken me about two minutes. Obviously, my first test was to see the latency between Alexa device and Sonoff Matter enabled device. And it was pretty good, actually. All the actions, whether I was uh, toggling my lights using a physical switch connected to the Sonoff Mini R4M, or whether I was using the actual button on the relay itself, or I was using the app to toggle lights on and off, they were quite instant and uh, everything worked as expected. The updates from the physical switching went instantly back to my app and I was quite happy with it. So next I moved to options to see what other options I've got and it turns out not many. I remember when I was playing with the orange version of Son of Mini Extreme, I had access to all those extra options like uh, selecting different switch type, detaching the um, really all together or setting inching and power default power on behavior. None of that was present in my ecosystems. Fortunately, I know for a fact that you can use the physical button to actually set different switch types. You can switch between pulse, edge and follow. So you don't have to use your app to set it. You can use the button before you put the device behind the switch and well, have it this way. But other options were just not present. At this point, if I wanted to share my device with another ecosystem, like, for example, Google Home, uh, the traditional way would be to link a skill, but not with a matter device. All I have to do is just go and export the code, the pairing code that I can then enter in another ecosystem to add the device without unlinking it. Unfortunately, as I discovered later, that wasn't the case with eWilling account. Going through the pairing process in the Ewelink account, I had to reset my Son of Mini R4M and, well, lose the binding to my Alexa ecosystem and Google Home. To add the insults to injury, the device actually connected to Ewelink account in a traditional way, not using Matter ecosystem. And how do I know this? The local LAN network option was available and I don't think that would be compatible using Matter. However, when paired, I instantly gained access to all those missing options that I didn't have before. So suddenly I could select within the app how the switch should behave, 
or whether the switch should be detached from my relay. I could set the engine again and I could define the default power state on the power loss. So all those options were available in the Ewing app. Another thing that I've noticed when toggling my wall switch and trying to turn the lights on and off using an app, that the latency was slightly smaller than while using Matter. It is clear to me that Sonoff local LAN option definitely have an edge there and the device is more compatible with Ewing than it is using Matter. There is some latency issue going on in there. But honestly, don't worry about it because the difference is minimal and in both instances, the device I'd consider to be very responsive. Since I've got everything connected, the last thing I was really curious about was actually power consumption. So I connected my Sonoff Mini R4M to a kilowatt meter to define how much power it's going to draw and how much it's gonna cost me to have this power at 365 days. In standby, I had a figure of 0.2 watts, which would, at my current rate of 35 pence per unit, uh, equal around 60 pence per year for a power consumption just to keep the relay alive. Obviously, it's going to consume a tiny little bit more power when the relay inside is energized, so bear that in mind. But this is more or less what you should expect from the power draw. So this Son of Mini isn't going to change everything. It's going to change the way you pair your devices and makes it easier to share the device between different ecosystems. It's quite affordable because you can get it for less than $13 right now on Son of website. So just go there or just click uh, on the link in the description and they will know I'll send you and you can get one yourself. This is definitely one of the most handy and inexpensive way to automate your wall switches without removing them and swapping them into something else. So if you're looking to improve your automation game at home, I would strongly recommend you a device like this, especially with the matter being more and more popular, investing early in the switches like that might be to your benefit. I also reached out to ITH to ask the question whether in the future it will be possible to retain Sonoff Mini R4M in Ewelink account while it's being paired using Mata protocol to other ecosystems. Hopefully they're going to say yes and if you want to know the answer to this question, check out the description of this video for the link to the article as I'm going to update this article as soon as I've got any information about it. As for now guys, I've got some interesting son of devices coming soon, which I'm not released right now. So if you want to know what's next, then hey, you know how YouTube works. I don't have to teach you all that, but I would strongly recommend you to check out my social media, follow me there, keep the conversation going, say hi, and well, that's it for now. I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. Thank you.